Blacks in Technology. Black, 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 blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Blacks in technology. Black, blacks in technology. Welcome, everyone, to the Blacks in Technology Bit Tech Talk podcast, a show where we talk to black people who are engineers, innovators, educators, inventors, change makers, and entrepreneurs doing amazing things in the world of technology. The Bit Tech Talk podcast is where they show how they are stomping the divide by sharing their stories, experiences, ideas, knowledge, and perspective on tech with the Bit community. This episode of Bit Tech Talk is sponsored by Amazon Nashville. Nashville has become a popular destination for transplants in search of a better and more affordable quality of life. Last year, over 30,000 people moved to the region, making it one of the fastest growing metro areas. Amazon Nashville will ultimately create 5,000 jobs in Nashville. These new jobs include a mix of technical roles, such as software development engineers, and non-technical roles for candidates at any skill and education levels. Amazon offers comprehensive benefits that support employees and eligible family members, including domestic partners and their children. Amazon Nashville is now hiring for tech and non-tech positions. Check out their available jobs at www.amazon.jobs forward slash Nashville. Thanks Amazon Nashville for your sponsorship and support of the Bit community. On this episode of Bit Tech Talk, our guest is Evan Leaphart. Evan is the founder of Kitty Credit, a mobile chore tracking app that teaches kids about credit. Evan is also a serial entrepreneur and co-founder of the Black Men Talk Tech Conference. And here's the host of today's show, the founder of Blacks in Technology, Greg Greenlee. So, Evan, t- tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, you know, tell us where you're from, a little bit about your education. Absolutely, man. So, I um, was born in Pittsburgh and a diehard Steelers fan. Grew up right outside of Baltimore in a city called Columbia. Um, so, that was where I spent the majority of my childhood. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my adult life was spent in Miami. So, um, South Floridian through and through at this point. Um, and just always been an entrepreneur, you know. I've, I've, uh, I was that kid when, when it snowed outside, was the first person with the shovel trying to trying to shovel sh- snow for all my neighbors, and um, built a computer when I was younger, so I could like burn CDs and sell them to my friends. So I've always nice. taken to starting my own projects. So Kitty Credit is is my project now, but it's it's about my eleventh or twelfth attempt at, at being an entrepreneur. <laughs> but this is the one I'm. I'm always been passionate about and very happy to be doing. Very cool. So, you know, because you're, you're from Pittsburgh, we're, we're like bitter rivals, right? Cause I'm from Cincinnati. Ah, the Bengals. <laughs> man, it's going to take y'all some time, man. <laughs> so you, you say you've been, you know, pretty much an entrepreneur um, all your life. How, how did, what you say you built your first computer as well. Uh, how, how did you get into uh, into tech, how did you become interested in like I, I want to go out and build my own computer? So, I, I it really stemmed from me wanting to make money as a kid, and right. you know, I was like, I need to have the fastest computer with the fastest CD burner so I can burn CDs for my friends. You know, long mm-hmm. time ago, for the record, yeah. I know this is not an appropriate thing to do, but I was a child, and <laughs> um, I found this thing online of. Uh, steps to build your own computers that like started shopping for computer cases, then motherboards and then sound cards and video cards. And, and I think this was like 2001 or 2002. So I had this like uh-huh. M4, probably super low hard drive amount. I think I still had like a floppy disk set up in there, but I had my two CD ROMs. So I was able to burn CDs and um, yeah, nice. this 40 X CD ROM. And I was just, I would go home, wasn't doing any type of homework and was just focused on burning these CDs so I could sell to my friends to make nice. like 50 to a hundred bucks a day, which is a teenager is everything. Oh yeah. That's, that's, uh, that's shoe money right there or yes. whatever. 
<laughs> it was throwback jersey money. That's what it was. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I remember. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So so uh, so you got in and in, into uh, the tech side uh, primarily to um, you know make you some extra money. Um, so let me let me ask you this: What were so you 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 burn CDs? What what other like type of ventures did you have when you were when you were small or when you were younger? I should say. It was funny. So I was unpacking some stuff like a week or two ago. Mm-hmm. And I saw like a business plan that I wrote to my mom and my stepdad. I was asking for like a loan for like $3,000 to acquire the domain name easydiscount.net. And um, I like was looking on like wholesale places across the internet. And the goal was to basically start small. I was going to buy like telephone cords and things like that at bulk and sell them and then work my way up to um, traditional electronics. Um, nice. I, I never did, but it was it was this most. La- I, I don't even think I lay out business plans as well now. <laughs> I did with that that uh, one when I was fourteen. I, was, I dated it and everything it was like two thousand. I had this repayment plan with like amortization on it. I was like, yo, who was this kid? I wouldn't do that. <laughs> you know, it's it's amazing. I, I think I think it's kind of a little bit of the the, the fearlessness. Uh, and, and some of it may be, you know, of course can be attributed to maybe ignorance as well. Like <laughs> you, you go into, into, into something, um, you know, kind of wide eyed and, and, and bushy tailed and not really knowing all the ins and outs, but it, it sounds so good, uh, that you just kind of, just kind of go head first into it. I know yeah. when I, when I was, when I was younger, um, me and my brother, we had, uh, gotten some, some contraption that uh you could create like candy bars uh or, or like can like chocolate candy so it's like this thing you kind of melt um melt chocolate and then you, you can put pour it into molds and things like that and so my brother and i we were probably like 10 11 years old we were like oh let's we can like create candy and then we can sell it um uh, take all this candy and we could do like a delivery service. And uh, we, what we would do is we would take all these flyers around to, uh, to these different houses and we put these flyers and we put some type of, some type of number on the flyer to designate, you know, the area and location. And then when they call us, it was wild, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, you know, that, that entrepreneurial spirit that we had, you know, a lot of it was because, you know, we didn't really know, what we didn't know right so just kind of kind of jumped into it no it's 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 true about that like it's just like yeah why not right you get there's a bunch of why nots but like when you're younger it's like why not yeah yeah exactly so let me let me ask you what, what is your definition of an entrepreneur um at the root of it it's a self starter you know i i think it's um somebody that sees a problem and then identifies a solution, um, be it something, a solution that's never been there or um, a solution that is there and just trying to find a different way to go about it. Um, And it can be something as simple and needed as being a handyman, or it could be Mm -hmm. something as complex as creating a a patent or new invention that's never been there. So um, I, I think entrepreneur entrepreneurship is really a mindset the the ability that i will take on something new i will start a product i'll start building a product um i'll start marketing a service um and i'll focus on growing that product or service and mm-hmm. just building it out from there got you got you i i, I like that um you know the definition you know you, you kind of seek solutions where there isn't one uh, and, and, you know, I'll, that's what I like about, um, I, 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 I listen to a, a lot of different tech podcasts and, uh, a lot of them are, are really, you know, hardcore tech focused, but I love the, the entrepreneur, um, when they, whenever they have like a tech entrepreneur on there, because, uh, you know, they, they talk about, you know, their journey of how they kind of discover this, this specific you know, problem and kind of how they looked at the, um, how they looked at it, the problem in order to develop a solution. 
But the cool part about it is because a lot of people feel that, you know, you, 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 you just have to be, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you just have to drop everything that you're doing and, and do it. And I like that in some cases that might be, but I like the fact that, you know, there, there, uh, th- when I, when I listen to a lot of, uh, a lot of these podcasts, these people are usually coming out of corporate America, uh, because they have found a problem within corporate America while working for corporate America, uh, and which allowed them to kind of view this problem and then, you know, kind of view or come up with or develop a solution for it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I like it because there's just, you know, there's more than one way, one path towards being a, a, an entrepreneur. I, I 100%. So who were some of, do you have any mentors or role models like, you know, along the way, uh, you know, someone you could look up to and say, you know, this is kind of the person, you know, that I admire and who I, who I seek advice from. Yeah. So, I mean, I I have, I would say mentors like near and far, right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, individuals, you just like the way they can conduct themselves and and you see how they are with people. And you're like, you know, that, that would be, somebody I you know, aspire to be. So, I mean, on a more direct level, I, w- I would say, um, I, I, I really admire my, my dad, right? Like it's not necessarily, he's not big in business, but he's just a very principled person. Um, yeah. so it's like you, doing, being a business owner, you're going to have to make some critical decisions and yeah. you know, some might require moral flexibility, but like it, it's just having that stance of like what you will tolerate and what you won't. Um, you know, to seeing seeing him be such a high standard, just mm-hmm. it, it really allows like the bar of right versus wrong. Um, so I, I've I've always been thankful for that. So I don't maybe he'll listen to this one day, but I, I don't know if I've ever <laughs> told him that directly. Um, but then in terms of just models for our society, especially as an African-American male, I would say like, uh, like Barack, um, not, not even just politics, just for the, the hope that was the, the bar went beyond just being an, an athlete or entertainer, right. For yeah. what, what a black male could be. Um, but then going to athletes and entertainers, like, you know, I being here in, in Miami, I've always appreciated what D Wade has done for the city. Um, mm-hmm. and just what he means to a lot of people um lebron um you know using his using his platform in a powerful yeah. way uh, in a way that you haven't seen from uh, many basketball players we've seen it in, in different other arenas of sports like muhammad ali and and, and, things right. like that. and um and then on the entertainer side i would say jay-z you know i, I know his lyrics from beginning to end and if we went we could go down a deep rabbit hole on like unreleased songs and i'd still know <laughs> but um uh but then on like the business side too you know I, I look at like uh like Richard Branson I remember I read his biography um he had a really scrappy story and and uh how he came up with Virgin right so I, I just love the story of overcoming um mm-hmm. and like having adversity um right. I I was fortunate to grow up in a in a decent area but it was very scrappy how I was there my my mom worked tooth and nail to make sure that we could still afford to stay there and it wasn't like it wasn't easy for her it was uh I grew up with with, uh with a single mother and um just kind of seeing that what she had to go through in my younger years we were okay in our teen years when she got uh, married but it was it was tough you know and she was she was a flight attendant, so she was gone three, four days out of the week. So I ended up spending a lot of time by myself. And um, just from that, I think that was that was probably the root of like my independence and entrepreneurship. It was just, okay, well, mom made a couple meals, but like that's dinner. If I eat that now, I won't have dinner. Like, let me start to, so just my, my sense of independence came a lot younger than, than most, which... Um, could go either way. Fortunately for me, it, it probably the foundation of why I am what I am today. So. And shout, shouts out to moms, man. Like, yeah. um, that's, that's a, 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 a really inspirational, um, a story, you know, there's, a um, you know, parents, uh, in general, you know, they, 
good parents, I should say, you know, they try to really try hard to um, improve the conditions and the lives of, of their children. And it sounds like your, your mom, uh, you know, worked hard and, 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 and provided and things like that for you so that you can have that, you can have her as, a, as that role model that, you know, that direct, you know, direct role model in your life that you can look up to and draw inspiration from. Yeah. Uh, and I agree with you about, you know, the principles thing too. Like there's a, there seems to be a lack of it. <laughs> uh, it and, and it's tough in business too. Um, that's, that's, you know, personally for me, well, I'm never enamored with people just, just because they have money, right? Like there has to be a lot more behind you being a rich person or you having more money, like you need, there has to be, you, you need principles. You need, you need to have integrity, those types of things. Those things are on a much higher scale for me than, than everything else. This episode of Bit Tech Talk is sponsored by Amazon Nashville. Nashville has become a popular destination for transplants in search of a better and more affordable quality of life. Last year, over 30,000 people moved to the region, making it one of the fastest growing metro areas. Amazon Nashville will ultimately create 5,000 jobs in Nashville. These new jobs include a mix of technical roles, such as software development engineers, and non-technical roles for candidates at any skill and education levels. Amazon offers comprehensive benefits that support employees and eligible family members, including domestic partners and their children. Amazon Nashville is now hiring for tech and non-tech positions. Check out their available jobs at www.amazon.jobs forward slash Nashville. Thanks Amazon Nashville for your sponsorship and support of the Bit community. And now back to the show. As an entrepreneur, kind of tell us a little bit about like what what does your day consist of? Like what are you, what are you what are you doing from you know from when you wake up to the time you go to bed? Uh, well, first off, my Google Calendar saves me. You know, without <laughs> having that type of structure, I'd be a mess. Um, so I mean, you you, you know, as as an entrepreneur, like no two days are alike. Um, mm-hmm. but you try to have the time carved out for just the like the tasks um, and, and you don't schedule meetings in there. But I mean, I, I've actually, I think when the pandemic started and people were just working from home, I don't I don't know if anybody realized uh, that they'd be a lot busier now than they would be like before. And I, I've seen it now just because everybody's available and everybody's home, you can get people on calls. And so yeah. if you utilize this time rightly, things are actually moving a lot faster, but just in the tech space, like I, I I, I, I try to like be sensitive to the fact too that there's some industries that are just really, really like at a halt and, and things are super different. Um, right. But when it comes to tech, it's it's not one of those uh, one of those spaces, you know. But but in terms of my day to day, I try to wake up somewhere between like five and seven. It just depends on if I answered some of my friends' calls to go out and and, and grab a bite or drink for the night. Right. Um, and then I always have like a coffee when I start my day, and then. Um, me and, uh, me and, uh, Mike Gross, who's on the, the project with me is one of my co-founders. We try to have like a standing call in the morning where we just go over stuff. Sometimes it's simple, um, just overview or, you know, things we got to catch up on, um, right. or it's like deep dives into the business. Or sometimes we could just be talking crap to each other. It's, it's my best friend, known him for over 20 years. So, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, that's that's a really enjoyable part of kitty credit is is that i am working on the project with people i know love and enjoy being around so it's cool um but yeah so that's my day essentially just i would say from eight to six i'll schedule conference calls uh, make sure the tasks are delegated and and just stick to my calendar but I, i can't say that you know, Monday is marketing day, Tuesday is sales day. I'd, I'd love to get there, but I just, right. like when it needs to be done, it needs to be done. And I'll just fill in, I'll fill in the time to do it on an empty slot. Um, if I'm taking my schedule to the next level, then I'll, I'll what I'll do is I actually write stuff down manually because I, I do remember it better when I manually write it versus just type it. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I'll scratch out those tasks. And if I didn't do that task, I have to write it to the next day. Oh. Um so that could be something like even if you just put on their gym and then you 
you know, do the gym and you see yourself scratching it out and then moving it to the next day, it's like, ah, right. You can, vis- you can visually see yourself BSing. You're like, okay, <laughs> time to step it up, my guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's interesting. That's something I I I, I do as well. Uh, I've I've tried to uh, move some of that into Trello. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, kind of a um, you know, since it's an online tool, you kind of access it anywhere and things like that. So, but I do I do like writing things down. I, and I don't know why. Maybe maybe it's the old school uh, in me or something. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I always find that writing things down, it sticks in my head a lot, a lot more. And I, I just like the, the, I think just the exercise of writing it down that, that really uh, helps solidify it with, with you, regardless of whether or not it's like, you know, you're writing down, um, you know, tasks that you need to do, or just, you know, I do a lot of studying, you know, technology stuff and just writing it down um, manually, as opposed to typing up notes and things like that. It helps me as well. So. It, it's it's funny you say that too. Like one one thing I've tried to do more of because I think about when I'm on calls and I see people do it, I'm like, oh, that's that's dope. He's listening. It is like I will actually like on the if I'm on a video call, I'll try to bring out a notepad and like write stuff down, and yeah. it does help you with follow up. Um, yeah, me at least like massively. Like my follow up question, sometimes I'm like, just hey, let's reconnect. But I'm just trying to reconnect to catch up on what we talked about. But if I right. wrote stuff down, I'm like, hey, so last time we spoke about this, make the intros here and here um, right. in regards to this. I know you said there, if you don't mind making that intro. And then I said, I do this for you. So here you go. Yeah. Then it like it goes further. So um, I'm definitely trying to get better at that too. Yeah, definitely. So let me, let me ask you. So you, you've, you know, you've, um, you talked a little bit about, you know, the inspiration that your mom uh, has given you. You talked about um, y- your dad and, and uh, you know, him being principal. And then you, you you talked about, you know, you mentioned some some other people that you, you looked up to as well, like um, um, Richard Branson, and, you know, for different reasons. Mm-hmm. But all of these people are some of them, you know, are, are entrepreneurs uh, in their own right. Uh, and so you, you look at these people and you kind of notice you know certain things about them uh as far as their behaviors patterns and things like that traits what what do you think you know after after being an entrepreneur after observing entrepreneurs and you know maybe taking some cues from from the people that you admire what, what do you think are some of the most important traits of an entrepreneur uh organizational skills ability to delegate um <laughs> and like follow through our CMO for Kitty Credit is amazing. Is an uh, individual by the name of John Saunders. You should interview him one time if you get a chance. But he's created a uh, he created a blog called Black Wallet. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, so blackwallet.org and then the the Instagram's Black Wallet. Um, we're just trying to do that for like a plug for him. But I, I was saying that to say, on like a on a smaller scale, he's one of the more organized entrepreneurs. Like I've I've been around to where you can give a task and then it's just like. His his operating procedures are just next level, man. So I'm always like, man, I admire the way that that you work. Mm-hmm. It's it's the organization, the delegation, and, and and follow up is always key for me. And and as an entrepreneur, you can have the tendency to want to do everything, but it's like, man, if you're if you're trying to secure this partnership, but then you're filling out these spreadsheets, and then you're doing this marketing campaign, and then you're trying to talk to this school, and then you're you trying to take over lines of code from your CTO, which I couldn't do, <laughs> but if I, you know, but if I could, who's to say I wouldn't try, right. um, like you're, you're not running a business, you know, you're just being busy. So, um, I would say that knowing what you need to take on, focusing more on strategy and like overseeing things and, and, and delegation is, is what I've seen in my opinion from right. the, the individuals and organizations that have scaled the best. And, and, you know, that's a good segue into a, an, another question. Um, you mentioned you mentioned delegation, and I know that's kind of like one of the hardest things for an entrepreneur to actually do. Kind of what are what are some tips uh, that you can think of that will help? A, because you know, d- essentially you're 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 allowing you you're putting the responsibility of of other things, other tasks uh, into other people's hands. But it all is affecting your baby, right? Your passion, the thing that you're building. 
some people have a hard time, you know, kind of letting that, um, letting that type of responsibility go. What, what are some, some tips that, that you've come across that, you know, maybe you've implemented that has allowed you to be able to, you know, delegate more effectively? Um, I would say, um, writing everything down like if you, you can make it a one day exercise if you want to go further I, I would take it to making it a week task right so over the course of one week just basically figuring out everything that you do from like okay i woke up i had my coffee here um i did i read my emails here i responded to x y and z after i um after i did that i, I had a video call like, mm-hmm. and, and then you can break it down and say, okay, who do I need help setting? Can I, like, where can I plug in help, right? Like, can somebody send out these invites for me? Okay, I see I have to do an email marketing campaign. Um, the content, do I need to write it? Can somebody else at least write the rough draft and then I make edits? Writing mm-hmm. it on my own takes, it, and then, like, do the duration of things, right? So I used to do that with my, my morning workout routine, Um I used to figure out how long it would take, like really granular, like, okay, if I need to go walk my dog, the elevator ride is two minutes down, it's a eight minute dog walk, and then I'm up in two sets, it's a 12 minute process to walk my dog. So it's, it's like, if I know I need to be out in nine minutes, I won't make it. But if I have 13 minutes, I can make it back up and have, like have time, right? So like doing that with your business. So to say, for me to write this rough draft, it takes me 30 minutes. For me to do edits takes seven so now I've saved 23 minutes and you start to really like take your day back, the better that you are at knowing like what task takes what amount of time, because sometimes we just say we can do stuff and then it's like, it, it's ineffective time management. Um, right. So I, I would say just really like breaking down your day, super granular for whatever your business is and like looking at it and seeing what you had to do and, and it'll seem annoying at first but over time it'll get easier like okay so i open my email i see the first inbox i check is for this business or i see i check my personal email um Mm -hmm. i see i check my like getting really granular with the day-to-day and then just figuring out on the whatever your scale is low medium high one through five like what do i absolutely need to do can't nobody do this but me or like okay if i taught somebody they could easily do this very good, very good. I, I need to implement some of those <laughs> myself. Those are very good tips, man. Definitely appreciate that. What's up, everyone? We hope that you're enjoying this episode of the Blacks and Technology Big Tech Talk podcast. Do you or someone you know have a dope story that they want to share with our bit audience? Blacks and Technology is seeking guests to be on our podcast. We're looking to highlight the journeys and experiences of black women and men in the tech industry. So if you know of someone, send them our way. Shoot us an email to contact us at blacksandtechnology.net or click on the link in the show notes and fill out our form. We're looking to hear from you. So... It sounds like, you know, you, you, you kind of have, um, you know, like this, this routine that you, that you go through and some, some ways to, to, to make yourself a little bit more efficient and, and, and effective from, from a day-to-day standpoint. How, what, what, what are some of the things that you do to, to, you know, to improve yourself? So for instance, like, are you, are you, are you reading books, um, you know, physically you know do you go to the gym like do you meditate like all, all those so kind of what it, tell us a little some of your methods around self-improvement bro pre pre-covid i was i was the man in the gym you know like not like i mean i was just i was going right i was monday through friday religious like it'd be there by five or six and once the gym was taken away from me i just kind of slipped like out of that routine. I'm getting back in it now. Last week was like my full week, a full Monday through Friday. And I was like, ah, okay, cool. We're, we're back. Um, but I, I've, I've always loved to do it in the morning because I hate the gym, right? Like I, I, I've never liked working out one, one time is like as much of an oxymoron that sounds like it's, it's one of those things was like eat the frog, you know, where they say if you had 10 tasks and one of them was eat the frog, um, yeah. And you did it first, everything would probably seem easy, 
right? So um, whenever I have a tough day in business, I'm like, well, at least I went to the gym today. Like this is nothing, you know? Um, that's been that for me reading. Um, I need to I need to pick back up a little more as well. Um, it's, it's one of those things where when I get a book, I really do implement it. And I don't have to read a bunch of books. Sometimes I just need the, to read the same book over and over. Um, like one of my favorite books to read is the seven habits of highly effective people. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would say that, and just, just really kind of maintaining a a schedule, making sure like I get a decent amount of sleep. I'm not that person that says like you sleep when you die, like, no, you need (laughs) to sleep. (laughs) Um, so as long as I'm in bed by like 10 or 11, get like a healthy six hours, I'm cool. Um, and, uh, and, and like one thing too, that's key is, is like relationship building, as like a founder, you can just get so stuck in like what you're doing, right? That like you might come out on the other side of it, but you've like not not burned bridges per se, but you've just you've let relationships stray, right? So like friends, significant other, family members, it's like you you right. didn't like continually outreach. So like I'm not the most active on social media or anything, but I try to continually like it is one of the easier mediums for being able to like check in on occasion. Yeah, and then going yeah. back to what you're doing versus like not at all. And then just in five years being like, yo, what's up? Let's talk a little bit about uh, the Black Man Tech uh, Talk Tech Conference. Yes. Uh, you, 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 it's In your bio, you state that you're a, a co-founder. Who, who's the other uh, co-founder in that? Um, so uh, right now the co-founders are Boris Moyston and Abby Adun Johnson. Um, okay. And we're, we're in our second annual um second annual year. So we're doing it first. It was, we had it, uh, in person last year in Miami, which was an amazing conference. Um, for this year, we're doing it virtual cause of COVID. Um, and we're doing it on a platform called run the world. So it's actually this weekend. Definitely recommend you check it out. Um, spread the word it's free. Thanks to our sponsors. Um, nice. And being in technology, I mean, it's some amazing individuals there. Rodney Williams, Marlon Nichols, Kai Bond, Brian Burkeen, uh Yep, Depart- I know Brian. I know Rodney. Yep. Um, we even have the Department of Homeland Security coming to talk about how to, like, have them as your customer. Um, Steve Harvey Foundation is sponsoring the pitch competition. First place gets $10,000. Like, it's... it's like, I wish I could pitch, <laughs> um, yeah. but uh, it's, and I, I'm missing people. So, I, I mean, I apologize for people I'm missing. Oh, no worries. It's, it's just go on blackmentalktech.com and check it out. Um, I, I really think you'd be uh, impressed with the content that's coming on there. Very nice. And so what, when is it? It is this weekend. So it is October 23rd. Well, I'm sorry, we're on the weekend now. So it is October 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Okay. And so what, what, what made you just decide to, what, you know, you all, um, what was the decision behind uh, founding or starting the black man talk tech conference? Well, it, uh, first off too, one, one, one thing to not be overlooked is it was done in partnership with the black women talk tech com- conference, which okay, those women are amazing. Um, and they're on their fifth year. So, I mean, we just, not follow, you know, not follow their lead. We, we, we try to make sure that we're bringing value to, but they've just really laid out a tremendous blueprint on, on how to really connect with the community. Um, nice. So just kind of seeing some of the pieces around it, um, you know, happy to be considered a part of it. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm head down in my startup. So I'm always trying to make sure that I'm doing my part to bring value um, to my partners and to the conference and, and everything like that. And I, I'm happy more than anything that we're doing in Miami. Uh, well, the, the be it, it's virtual now, but the plan right. was for it to be second year here in Miami because I, I do feel that this is one of the, the more overlooked uh, tech ecosystems in the country. Yeah. And I'm, I'm happy to be semi on the ground floor of it because it, we as we go more into this virtual landscape, people are going to start choosing where they want to, um, where they want to work. You know, and right. um, and it, if if you can work anywhere, why not work in places with great weather, right? Yeah. So, um, I know Brian's been pushing Miami for quite a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's one of the big, like he's very appreciative of Brian. He's he's one of the the ones that really had 
he came from a, like a scrappy founder to building a successful startup, transferring yep. over to VC. Yep. And um, just from there, like really like creating a foundation for a lot of us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Him and, him and his wife, Candace, are both doing some amazing, amazing work. You know, Candace is out of, out of Cincinnati. Uh, so everything she's doing with Hellman Accelerator and um, Lightship Capital, definitely some some amazing work. Uh, we we actually had her um, up at, um, at at Architect Conference BitCon two years in a row. She was she was a judge. She was on a panel. She was a judge for one of our our, our pitch competitions. She was a panelist as well. Uh, and I think the first year Brian did come, but he we we had him slated to to speak. But I think that's when he was dealing with the fallout of um, he, uh, of some stuff with his startup at the time. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So yeah, both, both great individuals uh, and doing, doing amazing work and making some, uh, a huge impact in, uh, in regards to, to black people in tech. So kudos mm-hmm. and shout outs to them. And, sure. and like what they're doing in like the Midwest, it's like that they're, it's awesome stuff, you know? So yep. I, I know it speaks to you being there in Cincinnati. So yeah, for sure. Yeah. 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 Uh, Candace and I, we, we met probably, I don't know what, six, seven years ago, uh, here in Cincinnati. Um, you know, and you know, we've kept in contact and ever since then. And like I said, she's, she's been part of our, our conferences and, uh, I, I had her, I had her, um, as a guest on a, I think we, we did, we had a virtual meetup some, some months back and she, she was a guest. She talked about, uh, Hillman and about Lightship. I don't think I've had Brian on a podcast yet. That's what I need to get. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and Brian, sure. Brian's like a talker. He has good stuff to say. Like he, he's, he's, uh, always insightful, even if it's just a call. Cause he's been an advisor to our conference, you know, anytime that he has a suggestion or just a comment, it's something that, kind of take to the bank with you and, and you know and yeah later i know he has a lot to say about the philadelphia eagles <laughs> <laughs> man uh the, you know we, we beat them so look <laughs> i can care less <laughs> oh man yeah he has a lot to say on social media about his eagles man <laughs> i hope so. no, they i mean the, the nfc east man is is in ch- i feel terrible for Dak, by the way but uh yeah, I, you know what? I, I didn't actually see the injury. I don't want to see the injury. I don't like seeing gruesome injuries like that. But I was yeah. watching the game, and then you know, you know, you know, in sports, there's the injury where somebody has it, and then they look, and then they turn away and flag for help. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. damn, that's one of those. And and um, but I think he's proven himself enough in these first couple games that there's nothing. That, I mean, he's been probably the one bright spot on the team so far this yeah. year. So like he he's definitely shown his, his value, especially if they really tail off, you know, yeah. year. they got well, your guy though. They got Dalton. So <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> the red rifle. Yeah. The red <laughs> rifle, man. <laughs> oh man. That's hilarious. It, it'll, it'll be so funny if they end up in the Super Bowl somehow. And <laughs> they went up with Andy Dalton at the helm, man. That would be crazy. Cincinnati would implode. <laughs> <laughs> So it's, uh, tell us a little bit about let's let's talk about Kitty Credit. Like, tell us what it is. Why, why you why you uh, felt the need to uh, to create it? Sure. So, uh, creating so many different businesses and, and ideas. A lot of reason why they never really it got to where I wanted to get them to per se is because I didn't have the like funding. You know, everything was just oh, I got a little twelve hundred dollars. Let's let's get the business registered and let's you know set up the profile and, and let's pass out flyers and, you know, like very scrappy right. types of tactics in the beginning of stuff. And um, I wanted to, whenever I wanted to be able to access like a business loan or a line of credit, I just, I never had the credit score to be able to do so, you know? And um, cause I made so many mistakes so early on. Yeah. Um, but when I look back on them, I'm like, yeah, some of it was purely just being stupid and just like just being stupid is not like, oh, I was never taught. Like, no, you you knew you should have bought that and you bought it. Uh, yeah. But some of it too is like the management of it and things like I didn't like not knowing like, hey, if I close my oldest card, I'm going to like destroy my age of accounts, which affects my credit. Like there's so many tactics of it that just weren't 
taught. So I was right. like, man, how can I do this in a way that like kids like 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 fundamentally understand it? So it's not just like one lesson in school. Like it's something over time that they, you know, that they understand. And yeah. that was what led me to um, that was what led me to to chores, right? Like saying, okay, what if it was a way that like the better a kid did their chores, the better their credit score. And then I started to really think out the algorithm and, and, and how to do it. And, but I mean, the idea stayed in my head for years, man. Like, I think I came up with that concept in like 2012, but I had no idea on how to build an app. Like that was like the most foreign concept right. in the world to me. So to, to be like where I am now with it actually out in the public beta and, and in thousands of users hands is, is, I'll I'll never no matter how far this thing goes like that it, that that will always be cherished by me that it's actually being used as a tool in homes outside right. of people I know to educate about credits. Bit is always focused on forming new partnerships and opportunities to assist the community and our members with their continued professional growth and development. If you'd like to partner with us, send an email inquiries at blacksintechnology.net. Do you have a product or service that you would like to share with the BIT audience? Or maybe you'd like to support the BIT community and do your part in helping us with Stomping the Divide. Start by sponsoring one of our podcasts. Please email us at contact us at blacksintechnology.net. And now back to the show. How, how does it work? Like, give, give us the rundown on, on, on you know, kind of a, the, the flow of the app. Sure. So public beta, I mean, the, the 2.0 version that we have coming out is going to be amazing. But the way it works now, it's, it's super simple, right? So a uh, parent, they sign up, they sign up their kid, and then they input the chores that they're going to um, have their kids do, make bed, clean room, whatever it is. Uh, mm -hmm. Or it could be used in a classroom, right, by a, tool, by a teacher for a different classroom task. And then based on those classroom tasks, um, you know, like, or the chores, essentially how they're done on a weekly basis will determine what the kid's credit score is. And we do that by different factors. So think of like a missed chore, like a missed payment. The longer you've had a chore, it's like the longer you've had a credit score. You mm. get reward points on a weekly basis. Um, and how you use those rewards will also affect your credit. So essentially like too much, um, too much, um, like using too much of your bamboo bucks will essentially be like using too much of your, uh, too much of your credit. Um, uh -huh. the more chores you have, the better it is for your score. And right. also in terms of the, uh, uh, like your credit mix, right? So you, you, what we're trying to do is break down each component of credit calculation mm -hmm. and putting that into like into the score. Um, and then on on the, the kid side, when they see the app, they will have the chores and they can say if they did them or if they didn't do them. And then they'll also have their bamboo bucks, which is what their name now we might change that title but they can be redeemed for different items, monetary or non-monetary. It just depends on the parent. Interesting. And so does it, does the app need to be installed on both the parents and the kids phones or just or one or the other, or um, it can be installed on either, either device. Right. But it's, okay. it's like the, the login is designed so that it can be just for one phone or it can be for multiple phones. Right. So we have a parent mode and a kid mode. When you're in kid yes. mode to go back into the parent side, you have to enter your password Okay. Um, and we did that in design thinking to who we intended to, to build this for, right? Like the people that need uh, to learn about credit the most, they don't necessarily have access to multiple phones or multiple devices. So we wanted to kind of build with that thinking to make sure that we're connecting most with our audience. Um, mm -hmm. So that's essentially how it's designed. So a kid can have it on their phone and they're in kid mode permanently until they're parent gets them out of that, right? If they need to check it on their device. And everything that we've done in, in our build out so far, we've made sure that it's COPPA compliant, um, which is the Children Online Privacy Protection Act. Okay. And and, and let's get, let's get a, a, a little bit into um, the nitty gritty of, um, of the app itself. So what, what platforms are, is it available for? It's available right now on, um, on Android and iPhone. 
what does your team look like as far as like the makeup, like um, the people who uh, like help develop the app? Like how many people do you have on staff working on this? Yeah, sure. So it is six of us. So there's myself, um, there's Mike Gross, who I was mentioning earlier. He's our chief engagement officer. He's taught financial literacy and entrepreneurship for over 15 years. Uh Um, There's Vic Bereno, our CTO. He's a lead engineer at Amazon now and has a master's of science in finance. Um, There's John Saunders, who I also mentioned earlier, Uh founder of Black Wallet. Um, He's also founder of 5.4 Digital, a digital marketing agency. So he leads up our digital strategy. Uh Um, Natasha Valley, she's our chief social officer. So she heads up our like social media stuff and all of that. And then our lead strategist, Matt Cohen, uh, last but not least, because me and him actually initially built out the wireframes together. And he was the person that really jump-started my, my learning curve when it comes to being a tech founder. So I'll always be appreciative um, to him for that. And uh, and just really, really knows his stuff. He's actually working on a tech startup now with with Ricky Williams, the football player. It's called Leela. And uh-huh. it's... Uh, it's a relationship-based app, not just like a dating app. They really, uh, they kind of take it to a deeper level based around astrology. I think it'd be, be cool. I don't want to overspeak on, on where they're at. I'll let them talk, but right. it's right. a really dope project. But yeah, so it's six of us. Okay. And, and where, where does your, your are, are you utilizing like any like cloud platforms in order to build this out or you know, what, what is that? Like the tech stack? Yeah. So we, uh, you know, it's hosted on AWS, like, like many companies are, and then we yep. built it in React and, um, you know, our databasing functionalities is done in like MongoDB. And then we have our, our server with, uh, server stuff with Node.js. Very cool. Very cool. And so how, how long did it, did it take you all to kind of build your, what, what was, what was the, the, the prototype or the, the very first kind of like MVP? What did that look like? Um, it, I would say the UI was a little less than what it is now, but it was pretty close in design to where it is now. I mean, our, our okay. beta, I would, I would essentially say this is like our, our MVP, like what we have, mm. uh, upcoming is, is totally different functionality, very similar, but in terms of capacity and capability is a lot more, um, but yeah, it's very, very close to that, but taking it back further like some of my initial sketches and i mean they're just they're they're hilarious to look at the ones that i did i remember i had a thing in like 2013 or 2014 i had like this kickstarter campaign which i i didn't launch it or anything but i had the page and and um it was like i was just talking about what i wanted it to look like and and i think for like it just the stuff is like laughable now like it was like you could be on my board of advisors for like 500 bucks like I had no, you know what I mean? Like I had no idea of what I was doing. I was just like, man, I want to build this app. And if I could have $5,000, we could just do it. <laughs> yeah. You know what I come to find out though? Like that right there is, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say it. It's like, it's almost kind of like willing things into existence, right? Like, there's this like unknown force, <laughs> right, working with you to kind of move these pieces into into place for you because you have such a strong you have such a strong passion about what you want to do. So, for instance, like I remember I I, I interviewed uh, a guy by the name of Will Lucas. Uh, he's up in Toledo, Ohio, entrepreneur, and he was telling me about he had this um, this this app uh, or this service called. I think Creedia or Cree Radio, mm-hmm. um, and he essentially was like, "Yeah, man, like I, you know, I kind of sold. I think it was like a McDonald's franchise or something like that. Uh, I can't remember exactly what the app did, but he, he essentially kind of sold McDonald's or McDonald's franchise on implementing this. And you know, he was just talking to like, man, you know, looking back, like I had no idea what I was doing, like almost." don't even realize, don't even understand like how I got um, into McDonald's to be able to talk to these people and then, you know, hooking everything up and, uh, and, and getting everything ready. And me and him shared a laugh about it because I was just like, man, I, I kind of feel the same way. It's just like with starting blacks and technology, you know, you have this, this wild idea of what you're going to do in order to kind of try to make impact. And, 
you don't kind of you really don't know what you're doing, but you're just doing stuff and you're and you're, you're you're you know just hoping that it all works out. Uh, and then you dedicate yourself to it so much, um, and you put so much passion and, and, and belief into what you're doing, like it somehow just <laughs> just ends up working out, man. Yeah, it's crazy. So, um, let, let's go back a little bit um, and talk a little bit about you know. So you, you've got this idea for 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 Kitty Credit, but you know there's there's steps you have to take in order for it to become a, a reality, like right. So you. You know, what, what type of marketing did you do? What type of out, you know, did you do anything involving, um, you know, even making sure that this was a viable idea, something that people would want, like kind of, what, what was your, kind of take us through the process of, you know, kind of idea to fruition? Um, I mean, like I said, you know, initially it stayed in my head for like eight years. Right. And then, um, like once me and Matt were like, all right, let's start building out these wireframes and became a real thing. And we saw how it could start to connect. And, and to anybody that's like building an app, like the further that you can narrate your idea and draw it out and like wireframes, if, if you're, you know, I mean, we're fortunate to our CTO is like a, a part of our team, but like, even with that, like if you have a really thought out concept and wireframe, you can save yourself a ton of money starting up. So, um, I mean, we, we, uh, once we got it, Kind of to a point where we could show people our little like proto.io wireframe people like yes yeah, awesome like I, i'd see what this could could be and, and like every time we kind of get that conversation of man where was this when i was younger or like it leads to every time is just kind of a pain point of somebody's experience with credit like it's All right like every time right so it's like either somebody if they're on the flip side it's because they just they had sound financial habits Right. Like that was, it's never, and even then they're still like, I don't really understand how it's calculated. Right. So uh, people know the score now, but it's like, we want to take people even further into understanding it and like really, really dive in on that. Um, I would say along the way is like, we build it out. Like, you know, there's a bunch of different chore tracking type of platforms out there and then they go Uh into helping teach about savings and investing like um the the kudos to to green light i saw they just raised like over 200 million dollars they're like kind of the first unicorn in our space Uh but we don't consider ourselves that right like we are focused on educating credit And always have been, right? Like the moment we try to be all things financial literacy to all kids, like we are like those companies and and, and we're light years behind. But because we're so focused on credit, like it's, it's, it's our greatest differentiator and, um, and we really stick to it, man. And and fortunately we, uh, I didn't expect it this early in the game, but, but we are partners with Equifax and, and, uh, nice. if you would have told me that that would happen at this stage, I, I wouldn't have, uh, I wouldn't have believed you. And, um, but I, I, but I, I, I know what we're doing. I believe in everybody around us and I believe in our team. So nice. just to kind of go back to your original statement, it's just step by step. We've received validation more than anything that just let us know like what we're doing. And as far as our marketing is concerned, uh-huh. um, I mean, there's, I would say it's there's half outreach on our, our end, but I mean, we're not spending like anything. Like we really don't have a marketing budget. And, and with that, we've been called the financial literacy app to teach kids about credit by Forbes. We've actually been in Forbes twice now. Um, uh, bank rate CNBC did a feature story on, on just kind of my personal journey with having horrible credit in my twenties and how it led me to create this app. And All right. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just, it's been a very, um, cool product that feels supported by the people so as a company we're just focused on making sure that our technology and the functionality of it Mm -hmm. is as strong as people's desire to see it succeed and and i I like the way uh, that you you know kind of explain like this is this is not just telling people to score for you know it's, it's telling people kind of like the how the score is calculated. And I kind of, I kind of relate that to uh, uh kind of common core, like mathematics <laughs> in a way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, the way that we were, at least I was taught um, math is a lot different than what, how my kids are taught. It's, it's, it's getting under the covers of, 
uh, how things are calculated as opposed to, yeah, this equals this. Right. Uh, and so I like, I like that. I like, you know, the fact that that's what, you know, kitty credit is doing. Um, it's, it's not just saying like, Hey, if you, if you do this thing, you, you know, you're increased your score, but it's actually breaking it down and saying, this is why it's increasing your score. Yep. Very nice. Very nice. Um, and so uh, I, I wanted to um, ask you, um, we talked about, you know, um, kind of from idea uh, to fruition, um, kind of what, 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 what's next for, for, for kitty credit. I had a, I had a different question, but now, now it slipped my mind, but what, I'll, I'll get back to it. So what's, what's next for, uh, for the app? I know you said you had 2.0 coming out. Yeah. Just the, like launch of our new app um, would be our, our next step. And then uh you know, looking to secure some new uh, just partnerships and, and things like that. So our our business model is fully B two B at this point. So we focus okay. on employers trying to offer benefits to their employees or you know companies in the financial space that are looking at to have some sort of value add to their clients that they can white label and um, we're building out a bunch of educational content and that content we're going to be licensing to be able to to offer to different schools and after school programs and um, within the new app, there's going to be like a product recommendation engine for different child-based financial products. So think like a, like a credit karma for kids. So is that how you're, you're monetizing mm-hmm. your app? Mm-hmm. So our, our goal is to really make it, uh, relieve the financial burden from the parent that wants this for their child. So that it'll be a premium type of model. But, okay. um, so, you know, we, we may have the, the, the parent, the individual parent subscriptions here and there, but we're really working uh, as much as possible to get as large organizations as possible to really make it available for the individuals that need it, right? Like nobody, nobody needs to pay another four ninety nine a month subscription. Um, <laughs> right. And if there's a way that we can do it to where it's not just the company saying, "Hey, we're giving back," like they can actually, um, it, it's there's a revenue generating model in there for them also. Uh, work mm-hmm. so um, just. Just working through that phase right now so but it, we're, we're in a good space as a team and uh not just my you know the the team members i mentioned but you know advisors right. around us too and you know investors that, that you know we're, we're in talks with it's very cool yeah so and how can how can users uh download the app just go on on uh, the ios store google play and just type in kitty credit spaced out k-i-d-d-i-e credit k-r-e-d-i-t and let us know your feedback more than anything okay. i'm always like tell us why this is the best app you've ever used tell us why it sucks and you'll never use it again <laughs> right um best way to, to do that is to just email support at kittycredit.com excellent excellent and 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 i've got it downloaded so i'll definitely take some time out to uh to shoot a, shoot a review um to you um so how can people learn more? How can they learn more about you? How can they contact you? So give us like uh, your social media. Yeah, sure. So me personally, um, it's just Evan Leapart. So E-V-A-N Leapart, L-E-A-P-H-A-R-T. So at Evan Leapart, either on Instagram or Twitter. Um, same thing for Kitty Credit. So it's at Kitty Credit, K-I-D-D-I-E-K-R-E-D-I-T on either Instagram or Twitter. Excellent. Excellent. Well, Evan, I definitely want to thank you for, for coming on and sharing your journey, uh, sharing, uh, you know, about your, uh, about your new app, uh, about black men talk, talk tech conference. Uh, definitely wish you the best in the future. And, and, and I'll, I'll definitely jump online and, and, and register for the black men talk tech, um, conference. And, uh, I, I'll look into that cause I, I definitely want to, want to help you all out and, and tweet about it and things like that. So, I sent out a couple of tweets uh, to, to our, our our base as well to let people know about it. De- definitely appreciate it, man. It's, it's great content for the culture. Like I, I, I highly, highly suggest that people check it out. So it's, it's as, as many virtual seats as we can get in there. Like it's, it's again, it's, it's free. So for me, it's just more so seeing, getting it in, in as many hands of people that, that need to hear from these excellent leaders in our community. I agree. I agree. Well, thanks a lot again, Evan. Uh, wish you the best. Uh, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Sounds good, man. Appreciate you. All right, take care. Blacks in technology.
technology.